All right. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for listening. We are here with Hunter Bailey of the Highway 49 podcast. Uh, thanks for joining us, Hunter. Appreciate it. Absolutely, guys. Looking forward to it. Yeah. So uh, big game in Charlotte uh, this weekend. Um, another night game. I guess we've, we've all been playing just night games this season, which is I think is kind of rare for us. I don't know if it's uh, the same for you guys, but uh, you like having the night games. I would. I, I need some noon kickoffs in my life. I'm trying to enjoy some <laughs> college football noon. with some. I'm okay. Hey man, if it's at noon, I get out there at ten. By four thirty, five o'clock, I'm drinking beer, watching college football. So yeah, give me some noon <laughs> kicks. Yeah, because you. Oh, uh, you actually work at the games, right? You do. You do the the beat writing and stuff. Yeah, so it's uh, beat writing for the Observer. They generally want stories, kind of either right after the game ends at the buzzer or something to follow maybe an hour or two later. So it's always kind of something, something going on. So you we, do some, you do something that we do not have the ability to do, which is to watch a game sober. <laughs> <laughs> we actually talked about it, talked about drawing straws, doing other things. Maybe one time, one week, someone just takes one for the team and drinks water, the entire tailgate, and then can ask questions. But, not happening ever. I don't remember that discussion. <laughs> it, Ryan, it's one of those times you just checked out immediately. <laughs> so. yeah, this is this is boring. I'm out. <laughs> we have access to do post game. <laughs> nah, nah, not happening. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, when we got access to do pressers and everything, it was you realize you can't be drunk during this, right? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I know I'm. I'll find an intern or, or, or something. But anyhow, all right, that's us, Hunter. Uh, so let's talk about Charlotte a little bit, yeah, guys. Uh, so, beat uh your, your south carolina state your fcs startup and then had a um what looked to be a big win against maryland starting in the first quarter first half even and then it uh that fourth quarter was kind of wild and crazy uh where i'm nervous about is we've not started off the games well we've finished pretty well but maryland uh, sorry uh, charlotte looks like they're playing pretty well from the get-go so it's been kind of like a tale of two games and then tale of two halves in both those games. Uh, mm -hmm. South Carolina State, Charlotte was terrible on offense for the first 20 minutes of the game. Didn't get anything going. No first downs. Nearly a pick six against South Carolina State uh, going the other way. Uh, but they figured out that they had Darrell Robinson. Uh, you guys will see a lot of number one this week. He is uh, basically the, the star of the show on offense. He's one of those players – and you can, when he gets the ball, there's always a chance he could go the distance. Um, and he's he's a true freshman, so they kind of, I think they tried to keep him out a little bit at first. But then when they realized when they worked him in, it's like, all right, this is the guy. Um, is he a receiver or, or, or back? He's a tailback. Uh, he's a right. four star out of Maryland. I uh, played at St. Francis where Poji came from. So that was kind of the, the connection. I mean, in, in the Maryland game is a complete flip, right? They score in five plays, throw a 50-yard touchdown pass off the rip, and I'm like, who is this team? Uh, because that's not <laughs> what we saw. And then immediately get a pick six, 14-0, to zero, and I am I had the flu this past week, so I didn't make the trip to Maryland, and I'm at home like, what the hell, man? Of course, <laughs> you're going to go on a road and beat a power five, and I'm on my couch. Now um, you can't go to any of them. <laughs> yeah. and uh, shame. Because literally – I'm 0 and 9 when I travel, or they're 0 and 9 when I travel, right? I've never <laughs> went on the road and seen a win. I almost came to the Georgia State last year and I had I called Healy and I was like, look, man, like off the record, is Chris Reynolds gonna play because he hadn't played the week before, or who's gonna play? Cause I just need to know if I'm gonna, you know, travel down there. And he was like, I'm as confident as with Chris playing as I am with our third string guy playing. And I'm like, you know, I'm not going then. <laughs> and so of well, course, you Chris, yeah, it's a thriller, but um, yeah, yeah. You, you, uh, you would have, uh, you would have enjoyed uh, coming down here. We, uh, we not so much enjoyed that game last season. Well, we are consistently picked to win these games. And um, I think more often than not lose them at this point. So, <laughs> you know, it, it, this is a, this is a rough game for us. We have not like figured out Charlotte very well yet. <laughs> I think this game is going to be so much different than last year's game. Like as far as, I mean, 42 to 41, I think this game is like 20 to 19 or something like that. Like real close, low scoring. Well, That's looking at, at the, the, the national like little analysis type people, they, they're giving Georgia state the advantage in this game. Sometimes it's, you know, you have a 54% chance to win other places like 70 something percent chance to win. So, you know, at least Charlotte's getting a little bit of disrespect in that regards. 
you tell me how Charlotte wins this game, and then I'll agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, at least statistically, and in, in the what I've watched of Georgia State so far, the run defense looks really good. The pass mm-hmm. defense looks really bad. I think that goes against what Charlotte can do. Charlotte wants to run the ball, and then they struggle throwing the ball. So I kind of think that Georgia State is strong where Charlotte wants to be good. So it's going to be kind of who wins that matchup on the ground. If Charlotte can get the run game going, that's their whole offense. They really don't have like a number one receiver. And then their quarterback really hasn't shown the ability to like, if they fall behind the chains, you might like punt team might as well just come out on third down because that's where they're at. They were two and 10 (laughs) or two of 10 on third down against Maryland. Wasn't, Wasn't a whole lot better against South Carolina State. Um, I think if Charlotte wins the game, like I say, they they just want to muddy it up. They want to play a low-scoring game and dominate the time of possession, and I think that's hard to do against a Georgia State team that likes to run the ball. I mean, they ran, what, like 45 times against UConn? Yeah, you have, an O-line. Right. <clears throat> you have an O-line coach as your head coach. You're going to run the ball a lot. You're going to put a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of weight on your offensive line. Uh, you guys, you guys any, got any questions uh, before I keep on going on? I can tell you our safeties are going to be excited. Yeah. You said your quarterback's <laughs> not good at throwing, so that, 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 that'll be beneficial to us. I mean, yeah, that's our weakest point. So if that's y'all's weakest point, that's a good matchup for us. So <laughs> we love it. We love that's it. That's what I'm day. saying. Yeah. And so I think Maryland, Maryland just put on film what every team that plays Charlotte's going to do, and they're going to put eight guys in the box, maybe like a single high look, leave their corners on islands, and just dare Charlotte to beat them over the top. Because all if Charlotte wants to run. You just load the box, and until Jalen Jones proves, hey, I can sit in the pocket and pick apart a defense, and I think you just you spy him because he likes to run, and then and just make him beat you with his arm. So knowing Georgia State, us being two and zero right now, we'll probably do the opposite of what you're saying. Like we'll, <laughs> we'll be very conservative and play some weak zone. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah so I would, I would. Y'all's, y'all's quarterback is as uh, athletic too, because that, that, I mean, that has been a little bit of a struggle because we put a lot of pressure on quarterbacks, and with the athletic, if you're an athletic quarterback, you can counter that yourself. You know, you don't even need an offensive line to run around. So, <laughs> you know, we've we've that's been sort of a weakness for us too over the last first two games. Yeah, Charlotte's offensive line has actually looked better than I thought. Um, I was worried about it a lot, kind of going into the season, just because they have basically one returning starter and then four transfers kind of trying to mesh together. I'm all in a quick span. Uh, they held, held up pretty well against Maryland. Maryland blitz quite a bit, almost like 50% of the snaps and they really didn't get home too much on those. Uh, but as far as, as far as kind of quarterback play goes, there's a little bit of a controversy right now. Poji put on the depth chart. Uh, there's an or at every single position on the offense. So, I don't really pay t- like pay too much mind. It's like two deeps. I think it's a lot of like cloak and dagger stuff. Uh, but interesting well, to see that. And then Ivy played pretty well in the fourth quarter against Maryland. I was going to say traditionally backups do particularly well against us as well. Um, weirdly, <laughs> you know, people are like, oh, yeah, get the backup in and then it'll be a little bit easier. No, backups are, are worse. So, <laughs> so leave them in. Leave them in. Well, I remember... <laughs> What was it? Two Except years for ago with uh, we... Coastal, with Coastal Carolina, we're we're um you know we're 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 good against their backup. <laughs> Wasn't true. it like two years ago that they put uh, Granger in against Charlotte? It was like almost like a surprise start, and then he throws like two or three deep bombs. And uh, maybe you know, if he was throwing deep balls uh, two or three years ago. They probably did not hit their mark. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I just re- ahead, I remember sorry. they beat Charlotte. It was like twenty to nine. It was. And the deep balls are the difference in the game. It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that may that that may have been the game uh, where uh, Coach finally was done with Dustin Coates. Not Dustin Coates. No quad quad. Dustin Coates was a running yeah, quad, back. Yeah, it was quad. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember exactly. Quad uh, who's yeah, like yeah. off to FCS land now or something, right? I think we, we yeah, said well, we found him. I think so. I think so. So uh, let's talk. Yeah. You, you mentioned um, your your head coach Biff uh, Pogi. Is it pronounced Pogi? Pogi. Uh, Pogi. Poji, so he's a character, right? Like he's a. Uh, <laughs> what? Tell us about him. <laughs> what What are you getting at, David? <laughs> I mean, he he took the Bill Belichick like the cutoff sweatshirt thing and took it to a whole new next level. Le- next he's, level. <laughs> he is straight. Hit from, the nail. straight 
beaches of Conway and Myrtle Beach or something like that to uh, just make it to a game. I kind of thought Amen. that was like a one game thing, and then no game two, same 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 get up, like cut off hoodie. Like what what is that? It's like a tank. It's a tank top. He cuts like right here, so the V drops a little bit. Get some of the chest hair in the mix, you know. Uh, I can't imagine he was doing it in Ann Arbor. Seems a little cold for that, but uh, he definitely did it at St. Francis um, High School, and then that's been his deal at Charlotte. But you're exactly right, man. He's a character. Uh, the introduction to him was like you're almost like intimidated by him because he's kind of like a like a mob boss a little bit. Like you've got the Italian accent going. He's like smoking a cigar. It's like <laughs> his dude's a multi-millionaire hedge fund manager. Like he really doesn't have to be there. And, right. Uh, so just going from like a 35, 36 year old Will Healy, who's like the most, he's like a kid almost to like this basically mob boss. It's like, oh, this is a little different. Uh, <laughs> but he, he sounds cool. <laughs> no, he, he, he's a cool guy. Like today at, and at both the pressers so far, he just sits out. There's like a little I guess, terrace um, right in one of the end zones at Charlotte where the, the field house is. And he just sits out there in his little cutoff, smokes a cigar, and just talks to the media. It's like <laughs> that's awesome. another it's another day for him. <laughs> we sit and eat with him. And uh so like he's a he's a good dude, he's good with the media. Like I say, at first I was like I was wasn't sure what to think because I mean we meet him. There's so many national media comes in when there's a I guess a new head coach, so it's not as much kind of one on one. And then you see him at AAC Media Day, smacking the desk. Uh that makes waves, uh, but I've, he's kind of, I mean, not loosened up, but become a little bit more personal uh, since, I guess, at least fall camp started and, and the season kind of came here. Oops. Tim, you got a question? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I know we're talking about the game, but you guys have to be pretty excited, I think, maybe, to be moving to the American. What what's the uh, What's the vibe when that all went through? Is that... I mean, obviously, you wanted to get out of Conference USA at no cost. You have to get out. It's like escape, right? So, what, what's what's it like? What's what are you guys thinking when you're moving into the American now? Yeah, a lot of excitement. Uh, being on, I guess, the ESPN tree of games, it's really cool. I mean, they just had a game on NBC this past week. I don't think that happens uh, if they wouldn't have made that move. Uh, that part's exciting. I think playing in a better conference and then bigger teams right like they have navy coming to town memphis coming to town this year they kind of they ducked like the best teams in the league like they don't play two lane they don't see you to utsa who's another team that moved over uh but i thought the teams that did move from conference usa pretty solid group uh you never really know what you're gonna get with rice like when they go to houston and blow houston out um, sure. this past week uh but i think overall general excitement uh just kind of this whole conference free alignment thing is weird i'm i'm in for like a north and south carolina even throw georgia in there let's just get like a local conference so every week it's like <laughs> i mean just imagine what it does for tickets right they're playing at ecu north carolina Clemson, oh. like <laughs> i thought you meant you wanted to play you being in a conference with unc oh. usc and georgia <laughs> i mean i'm, I'm fine like, with that they're gonna yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm in <laughs> yeah. we all like that no no I, I i agree i think that having you know um I like the regionalized, uh, you know, the rivalries and everything. But the thing that I liked about, uh, you know, what Charlotte did by going to the American, and which American is still for the most part, is having those uh, metro, those, those big city universities all kind of together in a conference because it's a similar makeup. Whereas, you know, Georgia State does not fit the profile of any other uh, school in, in the Sunbelt Conference. We feel like the outliers. They talk about how great it is to have all these small college towns together. I'm like, um, by the way, Atlanta, <laughs> not, 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 not a small college town. Yeah, they, but, they run these things that are like, who, who's got the best food and who's got the best bar? And I'm like, well, we're Atlanta. So, like, <laughs> you know, we're, we're like a mile in any direction. You probably have the best bar in the southeast somewhere our, you know like <laughs> our airport's bigger than your entire college town so yeah <laughs> i hate the atlanta airport i'll go on record with that what i mean Ooh, the la last time i was there I, there I was very i was like violently hung over and i was just telling myself like god gives us toughest battles to the strongest soldiers like man i'm gonna get through this and the tsa line was so long it was rough 
Yeah. So it's, I, it gets long, but it usually is is relatively quick. The problem is like half the restaurants aren't open like all the time, and then like the other half just have cr- those do have crazy lines and are not not fast. <laughs> and it's just like, so, man, I just want to eat something, anything. Sky, Sky Club, fellas, Sky Club, get there like uh, four hours before your flight. Sky Club it up. David, all the some drinks. Of us aren't rich. <laughs> Nor am I. That's why I go to Sky Club. 50 bucks to get in. <laughs> I'll spend more than 50 bucks at a at an airport bar. <laughs> Fair enough. True. No, no, I no, I uh my next my my question was gonna be the same thing that uh, Tim had asking about the American because that's a conference that for the longest time Georgia State felt like that was the place that was our eventual next step. And depending on who you talk to, we had an opportunity or at least conversations were going on and we turned it down or or weren't there something. I don't know. Uh but uh I, Charlotte's a school that I like to see us play uh, on the regular just because of proximity and of that similar kind of a nature. Uh, this is the end of, I think, of like four game series we've played with Charlotte over the past. Uh, well, I guess we started playing back when we were both FCS. But um, uh, would you do you like this matchup? Is this, is this a matchup you like to continue seeing, seeing Georgia State and Charlotte continue playing each other? Yeah, I feel like the games are always pretty fun. Um I'm all for it. It's four hour drive for the fans. So, I mean, it's one big city to another Atlanta to Charlotte, Charlotte to Atlanta. Um, the only year they didn't play it was COVID. I'm pretty sure. And that was one of those things where it was like right before the game. There was like yeah. a major outbreak or something. Yeah, but that one was just, player gets it and they canceled the whole thing type of thing. Yeah. Who even yeah. knows? That was the yeah. story of that whole year. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, um, was- <laughs> I had a question about, um, you know, with with all the realignment that's going on, and and you know, some some of y'all's higher tiered schools getting kind of poached away, um, and TV negotiations sort of right around the corner. What do you expect to see coming out of that? As far as you're Just saying, like with potentially TV like money. SMU leaving, <laughs> things like that. Because, um... and I'll give you a little background. So here, um, I've been saying that. Um, we shouldn't be in the AAC. They, they, they've been disagreeing with me. And one of my points has been um, that, you know, competitively, we, we, we are now like the Sun Belt is getting ranked higher in certain places than the AAC at this point. Um, and so like we are in what is judged by some as more competitive. And I think so. But um, once you look at the TV money, you're like, oh, we should be in the AAC. Like immediately. I'm like, oh, right. It's like 10 times the number or something stupid. Five times the number? I think it's five times the number, right? It's like two or three times. It's big. It's a big difference. Two hundred percent, right? So, <laughs> um, so like I, that's why I was wondering where you thought the TV money was going with you know some of the bigger teams leaving. Yeah, so it's weird, right? Charlotte doesn't get anything from it for like the first it's like four years. Oh, um, so you're like. Like the influx, when when I look at the number, Conference USA is tiny. Conference USA is like I think it was like four or five hundred thousand dollars a year for TV, going to the American, which I, I think once it's allocated consistently, which is like four years from now, like I say, I think it's like seven million a year. Which, what was Conference USA's? Was it Flow TV or? <laughs> they, they uh, I think it was. I yeah, it was like Conference USA TV or something. I think. Yeah, they, they they were all over the place, and, and nothing that was like a a major letter acronym. They tried some things. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I, had I mean, a lot the, of the, memberships. the 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 running joke was that you could uh, watch the game while you were filling up at the gas pump on uh, <laughs> yeah. the little screen there. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be, be kind of cool, actually. <laughs> That's the one. I'm I'm excited. We did not join Conference USA. I mean, I'll tell you that right off the bat. I mean, AAC we can debate all day, but Conference USA, I think objectively, we're like, thank God we didn't do that. Well, the, fu- the, yeah. the funny thing is, is when we joined uh, 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 the Sun Belt, the few teams that I was excited about actually getting to play, the Florida schools, the MTSU, went the, the Western Kentucky, they, they, went to Confer- they went to Conference USA. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, I don't know if I got anything else, guys. You guys ain't got any other more questions? I know we can normally just you BS got, for a while. You got a single question out of me, all right? And that's more than usual. I got yeah. to ask a question. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, just ask questions. <laughs> so, um, you gonna be at the game? You gonna go to the game? You, you over the flu? You're gonna be able to get there? Yeah, man, I'll I'll be out there. It's, uh, for our fans system. that are, I don't think any of us are gonna be able to make the trip. Unfortunately, it was it was a 
definitely a go-to game uh, when this game was scheduled years ago. I've been looking forward to it. The nighttime game is what actually messed me up on my plans. But uh, for the fans that are going up there, what, what, what should they hit up? What should they do before they make it all the uh, over to the game? Yeah, so Charlotte, all right, so the university is in kind of a weird spot. When you think of like the nightlife and stuff like that in Charlotte, it's about a 15-minute drive. Um, mm-hmm. One really nice part, is if you are if you're a fan coming to the game and you're staying around the stadium, uh, there's a light rail basically it'll take you straight into the city. It's very inexpensive. Um, you're good way explain, of transportation. You have to explain light rail to people from Atlanta. They've got no idea what light rail is. So <laughs> yeah, basically we build roads here. <laughs> little, <laughs> little subway, yeah, little subway <laughs> uh, above ground, and. Uh, it's it's pretty nice. Uh, it'll get you point A to point B. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it's very inexpensive, and you can't drive drunk on it. So you can ride drunk. But, uh, that's a, challenge that's accepted. Seems like I can still get arrested. You know, I'm gonna figure out how to drive hey, a train man. drunk. <laughs> hey man. So the excuse uh, me, sir. Can I drive this train? <laughs> oh, like, pardon me. Light rail. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple couple good tailgating spots. Uh, there's a place called Normulence. They bring an ambulance up right outside of the stadium, and they have a tailgate there. It's a pretty cool scene. Um, then they just open this. It's called the 49th Anchor. It's where all the students go to tailgate. Um, so it's, it's right by the stadium. It's a pretty big little area. They got a lot of corn, cornhole and all that good shit set up. So definitely. Yeah, I think I, I actually went to the last time we played up there. Uh, uh, Several, several years ago and I, uh, I got dropped off I, I was I was solo that day my wife was visiting a friend who actually lives in Charlotte so she just kind of dropped me off with like a six pack of beer and said go make friends and I'm like challenge accepted again easy yeah that's not a problem for me I'll, I'll try I'm like a Jesus and fish when it comes to that kind of stuff I'll turn <laughs> that six pack of beer into a keg no time at all but uh I, I walked around uh the campus and because there was a Georgia State uh, alumni tailgate thing going on behind the um football field and i saw like a big open kind of clearing where there were just a bunch of students just sitting out there with their tailgates going on it looked like a really cool environment and everything i thought it was uh, i thought it was pretty sharp i was uh this is back in our georgia dome days and i was jealous of being able to have uh it seeing that kind of that, that kind of setup and everything yeah so. when i was in school there uh i'm an alum we we're tailgating in a parking lot so now that they have this whole nice little field set up i'm, I'm kind of jealous but uh <laughs> looks like a good time well, we're we're used to tailgating in parking lots. <laughs> hey, man. One thing Atlanta's got is plenty plenty of parking lots. So <laughs> we made the most of it. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you for joining us, Hunter. I appreciate it. Uh, sorry, I won't be able to see you up there at the game or anything, but um, hopefully the series continues and we can have you on again and uh, uh, talk about some more uh, more Georgia State uh, Niner stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah, the I gotta say for this game the. The strength of Charlotte's team is the defense. The offense is still kind of working to figure it out, and uh, we'll see if the passing game takes another step this weekend or or not. Like I say, I think that's their that's their way to win is try and get the run game going, and then we'll see if they can throw the ball successfully and go from there. Excellent. Well, we will uh, we'll, we'll figure it all out uh, this Saturday night. We'll hope y'all don't do any of that. <laughs> or <Cheers. laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks a lot for joining us, Hunter. We'll talk to you later. Cheers, Thanks, guys. Thanks. Cheers.